Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Azure Every Day with Pragmatic Works. I'm Chris Seferlis, Senior Principal Consultant over here. And today, I actually want to talk to you about how Azure Data Factory pricing works. Uh, this applies to the, the version 2 model, which is uh, just about to be released in, in uh, GA anytime now. And uh, it's really broken down into four different ways that you're paying for this service. Uh, the first is the number of activities run, okay? Um, what, what that orchestration of those activities look like. Um, the volume of data moved, okay? Uh, your SQL Server Integration Services compute hours, so if you're running SSIS packages up in uh, Azure Data Factory, uh, and whether a pipeline is actually active or not. So you're, you're, you're paying a small amount for pi pipelines that are inactive, but you are paying for them. Uh, so just kind of want to talk through that real quick, right? So uh, Azure Activity um, runs versus self-hosted activity runs, and, and there are different pricing models for these, right? But for the Azure Activity runs, you, you're, you're talking about copying activity, um, you know, so you're moving data from an Azure blob to Azure SQL database, right? Or a Hive activity running HiveScript on an Azure HD Insight cluster, okay? Uh, in the, in the self-hosted side, you know, you, you want to copy activity moving from an on-premises SQL server to an Azure blob storage or a stored procedure activity running a stored procedure on an on-premises SQL server, right? Um, now, the next thing you're paying for is, is the volume of data moved, right? And this is measured in DT, uh, DMUs, uh, data movement units, right? So, and this is one you got to be a little careful of because these will default to auto uh, just basically using all of the DMUs it can use. Uh, and, and the way this is, is paid for is by the hour. And uh, just a, a good example here, right? So... Uh, say if you, you you specify and use two DMUs, uh, and it takes an hour to move that data, okay? The other option is you could use eight DMUs, and it takes 15 minutes to uh, move that data. The price is actually going to wind up being the same, because you're using 4x the DMUs, even though it's happening in a quarter of a time. So it's it's good to check that out and, and do some comparisons on how many DMUs you're using, because uh, that's where you, the bulk of your spend is going to be. Uh, the next thing would be those SSIS integration runtimes. And really, uh, this what you're using here are A-series and D-series compute levels, right? And when you, when you go through these, it really depends on what the compute needs are to invoke the process, right? So how much CPU, how much RAM, uh, how much temp storage do you need, right? And lastly, the inactive pipelines, right? So again, there's a small charge. It's about 40 cents right now. They consider it an inactive pipeline is something that's not associated with a trigger and hasn't been run for over a week. That is considered a an inactive pipeline. Uh, pretty minimal charge, but as they add up and you know you start to wonder where some of those charges come from, uh, it's just it's just good to keep in mind. Okay. Now, all that being said, remember each of the components inside of Data Factory, whether it be blob storage or SQL Server, or HD Insight, uh, any kind of you know any kind of storage or any kind of compute resources that you're using as part of uh, your pipelines, those will also incur charges, and those are based specifically around what those resources are, and they get billed separately as as part of your normal um, billing cycle. So. Uh, just something to keep in mind as well as as you start to use some of these workloads. You know, if you spin up a, an HD Insight cluster or a SQL Data Warehouse as as part of a pipeline, make sure you uh, make sure you shut that down afterward or pause it or or do what you need to do, destroy the cluster. Uh, you know, there, then there's a lot of opportunities there to minimize the spend in order to uh, you know obviously get your data moved, but at the same time be able to cut some of that cost out and don't keep it running all the time. If you love Azure as much as we do, you should watch these videos every day. And if you have any questions about this topic or anything having to do with Azure or SQL Data Platform um, in the Microsoft stack, anything we can help out, click the link below and um, you know, let's see what we can do. Uh, really appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thanks.